Hey guys, Kyle with Dirt Bike Channel here. On today's program, we're going to be replacing our front sprocket, our rear sprocket, and our chain. And I've got all these things right here in my hand, so stick around, let's get to it. The purpose of today's project is to go back to the 50 tooth on this 300XC. I've been running a 52 tooth, and while that's good for some of the single track stuff, what I wanna do is put this 50 tooth back on here to get a little bit more uh, high speed for out in the desert. And I just, I just wanna go back to the 50 tooth. Um, I've got about 50, 50 hours on the bike, and so that means I got about 50 hours on this chain. Um, and when you're replacing a sprocket, it's best if you can replace all this stuff in tandem. So we're gonna be replace, we're gonna be putting our sprocket back on, which means we're gonna need to go with a different chain and go with a different front sprocket because those things start to wear all together. And it's best if you can do them all at one time. The plan for today's project is to do this essentially in three steps. First step is to uh, take off our rear tire and uh, replace our rear sprocket. Next, we're gonna move up to the front sprocket and replace that. These front sprockets are pretty cheap. You can get them for around 10 bucks. Um, and then the last thing we're gonna do is reinstall our wheel and break down our chain and install this new primary drive gold X-ring chain. And I think this is gonna be a pretty big step up in quality from what we have. I think it's also, they also look pretty cool. And uh, so that's our three steps. First back here, second up here, and then third we're gonna, gonna go with the chain. It should go without saying that you could do this in, in, in any order. I just decided to do it in this order today. So I'm taking the sprocket off first. Uh, a little word about why I'm doing this. I initially, when I first bought the bike, I was coming over from an XCW, and I was used to a little bit lower gearing the XCW has, a 300 XCW. And I just thought I'd be a little bit more comfortable, and I felt a little bit better about putting a 52-tooth sprocket on this dirt bike. And the 52 tooth sprocket gave it a little bit lower gearing uh, and made it a little bit uh, easier of a transition for me, transitioning over from the uh, XEW model. But as I've ridden it more and more over the last year, um, I, I think I'm ready to go back to the 50 tooth, the actual stock gearing on the bike. I've ridden Sam's bike a, a number of times and he's got the stock gearing and I find, I find myself being very, very comfortable with that. So I wanted to swap. Uh, and go back to a 50 tooth on the rear. Uh, and I think that'll help the bike be able to pull harder through some whoops. I mean, it, it's gearing it up. I mean, it's gearing it up from where I am, uh, going back to the stock gearing. And I'm excited, uh, excited for that. As with everything else that I do when I'm working on my bike, I like to have a clean workspace and I like to clean off my parts. Uh, so it, it's amazing the grime and the, and the different uh, gunk that you can get in certain areas. So it's nice to have some contact cleaner around or even some brake cleaner or something else where you can wipe some of these parts off and, and dissolve some of those, you know, the, the weird deposits that you get everywhere. So that's what we're doing here, just kind of making, getting a clean work surface. I also wanted to see how much bigger that 52 tooth sprocket was versus the 50 tooth sprocket. And so you can kind of see that here, that the 52 tooth was, uh, you know, considerably bigger. Um, the one thing that was cool is it didn't require me to have a different length chain. With the 116 link chain that I had, I was able to, you know, use this, the uh, 52 tooth sprocket without having to have a different chain back when I put it on. Uh, so I just went back with another um, 116 link chain, um, you know, as, as I'm coming back to the 50 tooth sprocket. So you see me here putting a little bit of Loctite, uh, just the blue Loctite. That's the medium strength, you know, thread locker, um, because I don't want these little bolts to come off. That would be a very bad thing if your sprocket came off the hub. As you're torquing this down, it's good to go in a star pattern or a crisscross pattern uh, so that you don't uh, kind of bind anything up. That's just a, a general tip for you as you're working on your bike. If you're working in a circular pattern, uh, you shouldn't go just kind of go clockwise or counterclockwise. You should go in a star pattern. I'm not changing the size of the front sprocket. I'm staying with a 13 tooth front spro sprocket. Uh, but the reason why I'm changing the front sprocket as well is because with 50 hours on the bike and 50 hours on that sprocket and chain, you get wear patterns in those things, and it's better if you can replace all three of them at once. Uh, if you're going to change anything, unless you've just got a very, very minimal amount of time on any one of those components, it's best to change them together in tandem uh, so that you don't get any premature wear or anything like that. 
you're going to need uh, different bikes call for different things like this this bike on the counter shaft there's a there's a snap ring that holds the uh, sprocket in, in place uh, some bikes are going to have a big nut there you know so it's just going to kind of depend on your bike um, if your chain was already off it's e it's easier to get your sprocket off but you can kind of just bunch the chain up and, and give yourself a bunch of room up in there to pull that off uh, and then again, I'm uh, just kind of looking at my counter shaft seal. You could actually do a counter shaft seal here. Um, and I ordered a counter shaft seal kit in case I wanted to do this. But when I saw, you know, it wasn't leaking, uh, I thought, well, I'm, I'll run this a little bit longer. But uh, it's, it's a good idea if you're going to change your front sprocket. Uh, you might want to have a counter shaft seal kit on hand just in case you want to do that. They're not super expensive, and it's good to have them around in case you need that. Probably ought to do a video later on uh, doing counter shaft seals. As soon as uh, this seal goes, or, or there's another bike that I have that I can do, I'll probably show you the counter shaft seal. Uh, just putting the snap ring back on this thing, so you kind of have to push this thing back onto onto the shaft. And I use a I use a socket here. I'll just kind of bring up a socket and then just kind of gently tap around the socket to get that snap to push the sprocket back in place and get the snap ring to pop back down all the way down into the groove, which I have here. So there's a couple of tricks that you can do. Um, the socket worked for me this time to kind of gently tap that thing back and then get that snap ring down in place. I'm not going to take any special care removing this master link clip here because I'm not going to reuse it. I'm going to use the new one that comes with my chain. So I'm just kind of tearing this off and bending it with uh, a uh, screwdriver here. They're, they make a chain break tool, which I have, but I also wanted to show you that you can grind the faces of, uh, of these rivets right off because that the, uh, the master link is pressed on on these bikes. So you can't just pull that apart. You've got to grind. Either, you've either got to press those pins out or you've got to grind the face of the pins off like I've done here with a, with a little four inch grinder. And then you can just sort of wiggle this thing and, and pry it off now easily with you know a hammer and a screwdriver and it'll just pop right off once you've ground the faces of those pins off or push the pins out with a chain brake tool. Now that we've got our chain broken apart, it's pretty easy to just kind of pull this thing out. And the same way that you're pulling it out is how you're going to put it in. You're just going to kind of do the exact opposite of that, pulling it over, you know, putting it over the chain guide and wrapping it around your uh, sprockets is kind of the easiest way for me. Uh, you just kind of go slow and don't pinch your fingers here and make sure that it goes in the right spot down over the top of your chain guide and then down around your chain guide. It's also a good time to inspect your chain guides here and make sure that they're not worn too much. This one didn't seem to be. Um, if you're also going to have, you see me putting in the chain guide here in the rear, this would be a great time to install a different chain guide back there uh, or chain guard if you are going to do that. This particular chain is a primary drive X ring. It's an O-ring chain. And so when you put your master link together, make sure that you put uh, O-rings on, on one side of it. Uh, and then you can kind of see that I've got the O-rings on there. Uh, and then grease that thing up because you'll have O-rings on both sides of it. So grease it up with, the, o, with uh, the grease that they give you. Or if you've got some grease laying around, you can use that. And then you'll just kind of push it back through and use the sprocket here. I mean, don't try to do this the hard way and put it together off the sprocket. Use the sprocket kind of as your workbench, so to speak. And, uh, and it's a ton easier if you do that because it'll just slide together. So now I'm going to put the O-rings on the other side, on this side that we can see on the camera side. And then I will put the uh, faceplate on there. And we will then have to press this thing together. And uh, they make little chain press tools that you can use. Uh, I think you could probably also do this maybe with pliers or vice grips. And if you, know, if you were super patient, you might be able to get this done. But these little chain uh, press tools are very cheap. You can find them at uh, you know, dirt bike shops, things like that. I got this one from Rocky Mountain ATV, and it was less than 10 bucks. I mean, I think it was like 7 or 8 bucks. Uh, and it works really slick. You just put it on the chain uh, and, and get everything lined up. And then you use just, you know, an Allen key to press the press this master link together. And be sure not to not to do it too much. I think on this one, I actually press this thing just te a teeny, teeny bit much. Uh, you don't want to smash those O-rings in there. You'll know that you've got it just enough because you will want your master link clip 
to be able to just be able to go on onto the uh, master link. So on mine, I think I got this one just a little bit too much. I don't think it's a big deal because it will kind of work itself back out. And always make sure to put your master link clip on the way that I'm showing you so that it doesn't get knocked off. Uh, this is the way that they're supposed to be installed. That's the way that they're designed. I've got some master link clip pliers here that make it kind of easy for you to just slide this thing on. Forgive me for the terrible uh, angle here so you can't really see what I'm doing with the pliers, but if you have a decent set of these uh, master link clip pliers, it makes it really, really easy for you to just slide that pin, uh, that clip right back in place. And you can also do it with a, a regular set of pliers or some needle nose pliers. It's not it's not overly difficult. This is just kind of showing you what that master link press tool looks like. So that gives you an idea of how that thing works. Uh, it's not too difficult. And lastly, we're just going to check the tension on our chain. So uh, you want to check the manufacturer specs where you're supposed to take that measurement on your bike and uh, just take a look and see how loose your chain is and how much play there is. And make sure to keep um, do, do an even measurement on both sides of your bike. Make sure that you keep that lined up. You'll notice here that I'll do a couple adjustments on one side and then I'll do those exact same adjustments on the other side and a little bit goes a long way. So less is more when you're messing with your chain and, and trying to adjust that. So just take your time and uh, adjust it evenly on both sides. Uh, I also like to get a measurement on a couple different areas of my chain. You, you saw me spinning the chain around and taking measurements in more than one area. It's not going to be as important on a brand new chain like this, but it will be on a you know it will be helpful to do that on a chain that's a little bit older. So that's it for this video, guys. Uh, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like what we're doing here. And uh, until next time, uh, thanks for watching.